Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. In today's video, we're going to show you how to migrate from spec flow to rack and roll. You might be thinking, what is rack and roll? Well, rack and roll is a new open source .NET test automation tool, which helps you practice behavior driven development, just like spec flow does. It's essentially a fork from spec flow. And you might be thinking, well, Specflow is so widely known and so common across the business. Why would I want to migrate to Rack and Roll? Well, the key thing for me was the last stable release of Specflow was in May 2022. And the last push to Specflow for a beta version was in February 2023. And that's really concerning for me. And of course, this was concerning to others. And that's how Rack and Roll got created. Now, before we actually do the migration, which is going to be very simple, I just want to share this news document from Rack and Roll themselves, which gives you a bit more insight into exactly what it is. Like we said, it's a fork of Specflow with the aim of reboot in the open source project. We mentioned about the last stable release being in 2022, May 2022 to be exact on that. But essentially, this is an open source project which everyone can get involved in and collaborate and make improvements to. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You can have a little read through this. With that discussed, let's actually go into my project. So I've just got a very basic example here where I've got an example spec, uh, example feature file. Um, we have example steps in here. Um, and just to show it's all working, if I go to the test explorer, let's build this project. Click run on this feature. What we should see is it's just simple test logs into commitquality.com and asserts that the logout button is visible. All we want to do is make sure it's running at the moment. You can see it's gone to the login page. Enter the username password, logged in and certain that a logout button is visible. And we can see that's all working as expected. And this is currently using Specflow. So what I want to do is go over the steps of what you can do to migrate from Specflow to Rack and Roll. And it's really simple. There is also a migration document, which we'll touch on in a little bit. But the first thing you want to do is in Visual Studio, go to your extensions, click Manage Extensions, click Online, and search for Rack and Roll. Now, if you already have Specflow installed, you will have a Specflow version of this world. But we want to install this Rack and Roll. You, I've already got it, so you click this, and it, there'd be an Install button similar to what we have here for ReSharp and anything else. You do need to restart Visual Studio. So pause the video, restart it all. And once that's done, come back and watch the rest of the video. So the extension is just going to make it easier to work with uh, Rec and Roll. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to change the NuGet packages. So if I go to installed, we can see that I should have Specflow MS test installed. And I've also got this live in doc plugin, which uh, I don't actually need to use. But what we'll do is we're going to uninstall this one first. And now yours might look more similar to mine when I'm going to uninstall specflow.ms test. Make note of what the test framework you're using is. So in my case, it's MS test. And now go to browse and search for rec and roll. And you want to install the version that makes the most sense. So in my case, it's MS test. If you use an X unit, it'll be rec and roll X unit. Or if you use an N unit, it's rec and roll N unit. So I'm going to take this MS test one and I'm going to click install. Now, what you're going to see is it's installed, but you've got a bunch of namespace issues here where we don't know what binding is, what the given when then statements are. And that's because in my implicit usings, I'm using tech talk spec flow. Now, there's two ways around this. I'm going to show you both ways. The easiest way is to go back to your NuGet package manager. So when you're back in the NuGet solution, you want to install the Specflow compatibility package as well. So if I search for Specflow comp, that should be enough. There we are. I've got rec and roll dot specflow compatibility. And what this is going to do is it's going to understand the using namespace of the tech talk spec flow without you needing to change anything and everything should work as expected. So if I install this, now let's rebuild the project and we should see everything is all looking good. Here we go. One succeeded. If I now run the test, everything should work perfect just like it did when we had Specflow installed. There we are, the test is running and we'll expect it to pass in a moment. Now it's all working without 
anything spec flow related and that's because here we have this compatibility package which has allowed us to still use this namespace but now then you might not want to have this spec flow namespace you want to start referencing rec and roll well we can do that if i just search for rec and roll if i just finish this with rec and roll now it'll all work as expected it's made a lot easier for me because i'm using the implicit usings here and this has made a super easy change but if you do have your usings in each file so if i go to the steps if you had the usings here instead you would need to change it now a quick way of doing this is just doing a control f across the entire solution and replacing what we had before so that was tech talk spec flow and replacing it with rec and roll and you can do that all the way across everything and it'll make things a lot easier for you however like i said i've only need to do it in my implicit usings just by mentioning this rec and roll of course that's not going to change anything for us right now because i've just installed the compatibility package but then if i say okay let's get rid of the compatibility package not that you'll need to do this it's just showing you it will work without it if i uninstall let's save that now and if i rebuild you can see the compatibility package is gone we haven't got any failures which is a good sign where before when we didn't install it and this was still mentioned in spec flow we had a bunch of errors and now if i rerun the test we should see the same thing again where it all passes there we are test is running and that passed without that compatibility package but if you're just doing a quick migration use this you can clean up your namespaces whenever you need to now there are some extra notes i want to cover because i have a very basic spec flow project here whereas uh if i jump to our migration guide which i'll put in a link in the descriptions if you do have a spec flow app config it says right here that rec and roll uses a json configuration file named rec and roll json so the format is going to be compatible with specflow json's configuration file so that migration is very simple as well you just need to rename the file to rec and roll dot json just like you see in this example scroll down a little bit on step four here you've got our migrate config settings which is going to show us what we just talked about but the reason i scroll down to this is i want to talk about two settings as well so everything should work as expected but there are two settings in the rec and roll json that do have a different name and like it says here although you still can use the spec flow name so that'll still be fine for you but it is recommended to update these so if you have the step assembly section this has now been renamed to bind and assemblies and the binding culture slash name setting has been moved to the language section as language binding if you don't do these nothing's going to break however you can see here the rec and roll do suggest you might update it now so you don't have any future is issues and that's really it that's how easy it is to migrate from spec flow to rec and roll now i had a bunch of spec flow videos planned out which i'm still going to go ahead with but what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to start using rec and roll as the example but also mentioning that spec flow can also be used so if you are wondering about the tool then stay tuned, hit the subscribe button because I'll have future videos about this. If you do have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is always appreciated. Go have a look at the Wreck and Roll GitHub as well. I'll drop a link to that in the description. And hopefully this means that BDD and .NET is still going to stay alive. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.